Hey everyone, welcome back to Soul's Game Dev Journey. Last time, we took our game's visuals up a notch with varied terrains. Today, we're diving deeper into the world of map generation, focusing on a technique that's a favorite among game developers, Perlin Noise. Now, you might be wondering, what's so special about Perlin Noise? Well, in the world of game development, Perlin Noise is our secret weapon to create naturally flowing terrains. It gives us those gentle undulations, the gradual climbs, and those realistic dips and valleys. Unlike random patterns, Perlin Noise offers coherent, continuous changes across our landscape. This coherence allows us to craft terrains that don't just look good, but feel immersive and real. The code we're implementing today is based on Sebastian Lake's procedural terrain generation series, specifically the first five videos in that playlist. It's a good basic implementation with a good amount of control, of course modified to fit into our code base. All right, everyone. It's time to dive into the heart of our map generation technique, the noise class. This class is our key to unlocking the potential of Perlin noise in our game. The star of our noise class is the generate noise map method. This is where we actually produce our noise map, which will later shape our terrain. Let's break down its components. First up, we've got map width and map height. These determine the dimensions of our noise map. Think of it as setting the canvas size for our terrain masterpiece. Next, there's the seed. A unique feature of Perlin noise is its repeatability, and the seed is what enables this. Different seeds will give you different terrains, but the same seed will always produce the same terrain, making it perfect for consistent game experiences. The scale parameter influences the zoom level of our noise. A smaller scale will make the noise pattern appear more zoomed out, resulting in smaller, more frequent features. Conversely, a larger scale zooms in, producing larger, smoother features. Now onto the octaves, persistence, and lacanarity parameters. These three work in harmony to fine-tune the detail and complexity of our noise. Octaves refers to the number of layers of noise we're using. More octaves mean more detail. However, each additional octave has a decreasing impact on the final output, thanks to our next parameter, persistence. Persistence controls the amplitude of each octave, which dictates the height of the features for that layer of noise. The value is usually between 0 and 1 to reduce the amplitude of each subsequent octave, making them have a subtler impact. Lacanarity affects the frequency of each octave. A value greater than 1 increases the frequency, adding more small details and making our terrain appear rougher. And finally, the offset. This parameter lets us pan or scroll through the noise. Imagine you've got a vast canvas of Perlin noise stretching out infinitely. The offset lets you choose which part of this canvas you want to view. By changing the offset, we can explore different sections of our noise map without changing the noise characteristics themselves. But here's where things get even more fascinating. For every octave we use, we generate a random offset. Why, you ask? Remember how our octaves add layers of noise on top of each other. By introducing a unique offset for each octave, we ensure that these layers aren't perfectly aligned. This misalignment introduces variation and richness, preventing repetitive or predictable patterns. This approach embodies the essence of terrain generation. Nature is unpredictable, and by introducing these slight variations, we capture that organic randomness, ensuring each terrain feels unique and alive. Now that we've mastered the intricacies of noise generation, it's time to see how we bring this noise to life within our game. Our map generator class is the bridge between abstract noise and tangible terrains. It includes some settings specific to our implementation such as, if we want to use our hex grid for height and width, if we want to automatically generate a new map on the start and if we want to use threads. Surprisingly in the editor view, tasks are way slower than main thread, so I have this turned off when working in the inspector. At the heart of this class is the generate map method. This method first generates our noise map using the parameters we discussed. Deep within the mechanics of our map generation, there are some pivotal components that deserve our attention. There are two other methods here, which we have to have a closer look at, starting with the assigned terrain types method. Here lies the alchemy of transforming the grayscale of our noise map into the diverse terrains of our game world. This method maps the height values from our noise map to specific terrain types. Whether it's the verdant green of dense forests, the azure of serene lakes, or the towering peaks of mountains, it's in this method that our world gains its character. Next, we have the generate colors from terrain method. This method is our game's painter dabbing the canvas of our world with appropriate colors. Given our terrain data, this function ensures each terrain type gets the color we've set up for it in the terrain type scriptable object from the last video. Now, let's delve into the heart of our terrain classification, the terrain height struct. This simple, yet powerful structure holds the height values that determine the boundary between different terrains. Using this array, we set up a list of terrain height structs. Each entry signifies a transition, a boundary where one terrain morphs into another. 
This array is the blueprint, the guidebook that our map generation follows. Imagine these boundaries as the altitude lines on a topographic map, guiding us through the varying altitudes of our world. If you're thinking why not just determine the height in the terrain type, that's because we want only the unchanging information about the terrain to be stored there. The terrain height struct also allows us to create different sets of rules for different kinds of maps in the future. As we continue our deep dive into the intricacies of terrain generation, let's shift our gaze towards a class that serves as the unsung hero of our visual representation, the Texture Generator class. You can use the results as a preview in the game, a mini-map or even as a beautiful visualization in your YouTube videos. The Texture from Color Map method is where the magic begins. Even a color map in dimensions, this method crafts a texture that our game can render. It's like giving an artist a palette of colors and watching them craft a masterpiece. It meticulously paints each pixel with the provided color, ensuring that our terrains are visually consistent and vibrant. Next, we have Texture from Height Map. This method takes our height map, a representation of the elevation of our terrain, and crafts a grayscale texture. Higher terrains are represented by whiter shades, while lower terrains are darker. The Texture Generator class might seem straightforward, but its significance cannot be understated. It's the bridge between the raw, numerical data of our terrains and the vivid landscapes that players experience. With every pixel it paints, it brings our world one step closer to life. Now that we have the texture, we need to be able to display it somewhere. This is what the Map Display class is for. This component is crucial, it's the bridge between our generated data and what we actually see on the screen. Diving into the heart of the Map Display class, we first have an enum where we can select if we want to draw black and white noise data or colorful terrain data. We also have references to the renderer and map generator so that we can subscribe to events in it. There's one method with an overflow subscribing to the event called generate texture and draw. Based on the parameters it receives, it'll draw either a noise map or color map. The key to the workings of the map to play, however, is in the other two methods. Firstly, we have the draw texture method. As the name suggests, this is where we display the texture generated by the texture generator class and scale the object so that we don't get a stretched image. Next, we have the subscribe to events method. In any game, communication is key. This method ensures our map display class stays informed. By subscribing to specific events from our map generator, it remains in sync, reacting to changes and updates in real time. We also need to make some changes in the editor. We need a renderer to put the texture on. First, we will create a new material. You can call it whatever you want, I'm going for noise material. It should be unlit, texture kind, so that it won't get affected by the lighting in the scene. Next, we need to put it somewhere, so let's make a plane in the scene and attach it to it. We can then link it to the map display and we're done. As we journey further into our world building process, we return to a class that's pivotal to our game's grid structure, the hex grid. While we've discussed its foundational aspects before, today we'll delve into the new modifications tailored for our advanced terrain generation. First up, set hex cell terrain type subscribes to map generator and receives the terrain types array. Pretty straightforward. It then runs generate hex cell data method in a separate task. Previously, this function randomly assigned terrains. Now, it's evolved. It takes a terrain map parameter. By passing this map as an argument, we're ensuring that the terrain assignment isn't random anymore. Instead, it's based on the intricacies of our noise map, giving a more natural, diverse, and controlled terrain distribution. Another significant enhancement is our interaction with the main thread dispatcher. As we've discussed in the previous video, Unity, by design, allows certain operations only on the main thread, especially those that deal with game objects. Our terrain instantiation is one such operation. To work around this while still benefiting from multi-threading, we use the main thread dispatcher. It ensures that specific sections of our code, like the instantiation coroutine, run on the main thread, maintaining Unity's requirements and ensuring smooth performance. Lastly, a subtle but crucial change, the coordinates have been flipped to match our texture. This ensures that our noise map and the hex grid align perfectly, leading to consistent and accurate terrain rendering. The hex grid class, with these modifications, becomes the backbone of our advanced terrain generation. By integrating noise maps, multi-threading, and careful coordination of tasks, we've transformed our grid from a random mess into a dynamic, living world. As we journey deeper into the realm of map generation, the possibilities are, quite literally, as vast as the worlds we can create. While we've laid a solid foundation with Perl and noise, there's a universe of advanced techniques awaiting exploration. We may explore some, but don't be afraid to go and try implementing them yourself. Imagine simulating wind patterns that influence the spread of sand in deserts, or the sway of trees in forests.
or introducing evaporation mechanics, where lakes and rivers can diminish or expand based on surrounding conditions and influence the terrain around them. Temperature simulations can be another game changer, leading to dynamic seasons that transform our terrains over time or influence the winds and evaporation of moisture. These are just a few examples. With the foundation we've set, you're equipped to experiment, iterate, and venture into even more sophisticated terrain generation techniques. While our journey into the depths of map generation has been truly enlightening, it's now time to shift our gaze to a new frontier, interacting with our beautifully crafted world. In our upcoming sessions, we'll be diving into the realm of camera mechanics. With the power of Cinemachine, we'll be setting up a camera system that not only captures the essence of our game world but also provides an intuitive and immersive player experience. Additionally, we'll enhance our player's connection to the world by introducing interactive tooltips. These will offer immediate feedback as players hover over terrains, revealing insights about each hex, be it a dense forest, a tranquil lake, or a towering mountain. But before we delve into these aspects, a quick note on our map generation journey. We're by no means done with our exploration of terrains and map dynamics. In future episodes, we'll be revisiting this topic, delving into map types, optimizing instantiation based on visibility, and so much more. So, rest assured, the wonders of map generation are far from over. But for now, let's gear up to breathe life into our world, making it interactive and even more captivating.